Guess what? Social media is bad for you. I know, I know. It's not like you've heard it constantly from your parents, the news, TV, and Netflix documentaries. But if we all know social media is bad for us, why do we still scroll? And what are we going to do about it? There is this gap between the things that we want to do and the things that we actually do. Many of us live our lives so they're aesthetically pleasing for others' consumption. Or we just waste our lives watching other people live theirs. My name is Julia Montgomery. I watched myself and my generation become addicted to social media. My experience inspired me to do what I can to fix this issue. So I spent the last year and a half researching social media and building a better alternative through my startup, Capsula. In my research, I found these conversations typically had one of two conclusions. Number one, delete all social media. Quit cold turkey. That's great advice, but it hasn't worked. I bet most of you aren't willing to delete social media. Number two, it's the social media company's fault, so they should fix it. This is entirely true and valid, but it's also entirely unhelpful. These social media companies like Facebook or Meta are never going to fix this problem, and they're well aware of the effects, but they still don't care. Social media isn't going away. It affects everyone now, and it will continue to do so more in the future. So today, I'm gonna to focus on a third, and in my opinion, more helpful conclusion. Ways you and I can fix the social dilemma of social media starting now. As we know, social media causes depression and anxiety among many others. So why do we keep scrolling? Perhaps it's because when we stop scrolling, we face the reality that we may not like ourselves or our lives. That is an incredibly scary thought. So we keep scrolling. We keep watching others live their perfectly curated, posed, and filtered lives. We consume. We consume content that makes us feel worse because that increases our engagement. And yet, we keep scrolling. There's a term for it, actually, doom scrolling. Our value to these companies is equal to our screen time. We are a vessel to be marketed to and commoditized. This is the currency of consumption. Mark Zuckerberg is not going to fix their highly effective and incredibly profitable source of revenue. So this forms a really bleak cycle. But while these other conversations stop there, I promise that we will leave here with actionable ways to fix this for ourselves and one another. It is not our fault that these problems have been created, but it's within our control to fix them. I'll outline my three steps to solving social media. Number one, be mindful consumers. Life is so much better when it isn't contained in a six inch screen. Recognize what content you are consuming and ask yourself if you like how you're being influenced because you are being influenced. If you don't, then disengage. And if it makes you feel worse about yourself or your life, unfollow. Time is our most valuable resource. Spend it wisely. I'm not here to dictate your screen time, and I think each of us knows what a reasonable amount is. So holding ourselves accountable is essential. Or set controls on your phone to help you. You only have 16 waking hours in a day, and the average person spends two of them on social media. I decided to either make that time beneficial or to reduce it. Also, evaluate the medium you're consuming on. Maybe you don't have to have all of your social platforms, but only a couple of them, or you can move to better ones. I no longer use Snapchat. I was tired of sending meaningless photos back and forth, 
and not having real conversation. And after the initial withdrawal period, I find that I really enjoy the conversations better and I have no negative effects on my social life. I also periodically delete or deactivate my Instagram to really make sure I'm not reliant and to give myself a break. TikTok is the worst at this. It is so perfectly addictive. I just started my first semester at Harvard and between that and working on my startup, I have no extra time. And yet, I found myself scrolling. It was coming at the direct cost of my sleep, so I deleted it off my phone and that was an immense benefit to me. Step number two, be mindful creators. In the immortal, albeit rephrased words of Kendrick Lamar, I'm so sick and tired of the Photoshop. Most everyone watching this, myself included, has fallen prey to the, to the temptation of editing, be it Photoshop, Facetune, or filters. When I had Snapchat in middle school, I remember vividly when they released the face-altering filters. First, it was pretty innocent, the infamous dog filter. Then it was a more discreet filter that made your eyes bigger, skin smooth, and nose smaller. As a middle school girl, I was obsessed. I also never liked a normal picture of myself for many years. And to this day, I'm affected by the distortion of social media. There is this completely unrealistic expectation of perfection. And we are fed this and internalize it. We are viewing a posed, photoshopped and filtered version of reality and then when we go create our own content, we feel a pressure to emulate it, to feed into this. Humans are naturally comparative beings, but our parents only had to compare themselves with people they either knew directly or occasionally saw in a magazine or a movie. Not constantly delivered to their fingertips, engineered to get a reaction, which is most effective through negative emotions. I see quite often when celebrities or influencers are caught photoshopping, they defend themselves saying, I'm not responsible for the feelings of others. I disagree. That mindset is a slippery slope to a selfish world I don't want to live in. If we all care about one another, life will be better. It's not like it's a real image of how someone looks. They're masquerading a false reality and causing not just insecurity, but health issues and real mental health crises. Again, passing judgment on the past is unhelpful. I would bet that most people watching have also tweaked a photo or used a face altering filter. Why wouldn't we? It's how these platforms were designed. But let's be real. We must end this cycle. Instead, we can focus on our decisions going forward. This means making a promise to ourselves and those who consume our content to stop editing our face and body. We must stop pretending our lives are perfect. None of ours are. If we're going to use social media, let's do it in a healthy way and inspire. Which leads me to step number three, inspire and be inspired. Start a conversation with your friends or family and hold each other accountable. Self-awareness is the first step, but we cannot end there. We must take back control of our lives. We've all seen how quickly ideas can spread online. Let's use this to our advantage. If everyone watching this were to be mindful creators and consumers and make this pledge, a movement could form around authenticity. In fact, we can use the very tools of social media to help inspire this. Let's say a hashtag let's be real to inspire others or simply to just emulate this same methodology on your platform. I personally vow to hold all of these things accountable in my own social medias and I truly know the difference every single one of us can make. Today can be the opportunity I know so many of us have been looking for a way to genuinely make a difference in a problem we all know far too well. Rather than social media, let's have a social life. Rather than virtual reality, let's represent reality virtually. Rather than being followers, 
Let's lead the change. Stop scrolling and join me in fixing the social dilemma of social media starting now. Thank you.